Hi everybody, this is a demonstration on how to make cording. I recently had somebody who uh, emailed me and asked me how I make all my different cording. These are all the tools that I use. Um, you have to have tape, bare minimum you have to have tacks. Um, I buy stainless steel tack. Well, I, I apologize. They're called aluminum tacks, <clears throat> so they don't mash when you hammer them in. And I'm going to show you two ways because this little piece of equipment here is a vise, and what it does is it clamps down. This is what I use. It's a clamp, vise clamp. Um, but you can use, you can do this just by using a tack. So you don't have to have one of these clamps. This is a blocking board. It is fabric covered uh, plywood. And it has, you know, this is where I used to do all my blocking. Um, I use fishing line. You can use a piece of thread to do this. You, this is what I used to do all my uh, sewing cording on and things like that because um, trying to get this kind of mm, plastic filament whatever thread from your local store it always ends up unspooling and it's a huge mess and for whatever reason you know I just like the fishing line better I do use a hot glue gun for this and um, I'll explain it as I go. So here we go. Quick and dirty, doesn't take long. I'll try to be as good about getting details as possible. So this little vise, I have to, hold on, I had it adjusted for just the single, so I'm going to tighten that on the end of my, well, on my table, nice and tight. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do this with pearl cotton because it's quick and easy and it's just a lot faster. There's a lot of principles to using um, Krynic or other things, so we'll just keep it easy with this one. So when I used to do ornaments, the ornament size, I would do two skeins. I'd open it up, cut the whole skein right in half, okay? Then I would count out how many I want. And for this one, I'm going to do 13 and 13. I already have that measured out over here. Okay. So I bring the two ends together. And take a piece of filament. And I'm sorry, I know it's clear, so it's a little hard to see this. And I just loop it around there. And what I do is I loop it once, twice through. That way when it tightens down, um, it won't slip back off. It keeps it nice and tight there. Okay. All right. So here we have our nice little fuzzy end. I clip off some of the extra. Okay. And this is where the glue gun comes in. I like to use a glue gun and get it right down in there because what I have found is that it keeps the um, strands from spinning. Okay, I'm about to do what grandma used to do, lick my fingers. Um, I use a low temp glue gun, but it is still hot enough, so I mush all of that down. I advise for anybody that does not have asbestos fingers to use 
Um, you can use a needle nose, pair of needle nose pliers or things like that. Um, I do not advise you just trying to glom onto some hot glue. We all know how that ends up. Very bad burns. So please don't do that. Okay, but I lick my fingers to just put a little coating between me and the low temp glue. So now we have this nice flattened piece. All right, and I'm going to put that in my little vise over here. And wham it. Of course, it doesn't want to. Okay. So we have it all clamped down. We may give it a tug because we're going to be really tugging on this. Okay. I can get rid of my glue gun now. Yes, I use cheaters too. So, um, if I didn't have this vise, you're going to take one of these tacks. You're going to put your, your base hot glue gun piece in. You're going to stab it into your board and wham it in with your cording piece into the board. It'll stay as long as you get it in there far enough. They offer two kinds of tacks. They offer the short, okay, and they offer the longer. I think this is this is five eighths and this is three eighths, I think. But I misordered these really super long ones last time, and now I'm kind of loving them. So we're gonna kind of smooth it down. We're gonna take our tape. We're gonna do one. Two, three pieces of tape. Okay, they're down there, I promise. All right, you want this stuff before you get to this point. All right, here, let me turn my camera a little. Okay, there we go. It's hard to do because it's so long. All right, so when you put this on, all right, I, because I twist to the right when I do this, it's important that you put your tape to the top and roll it to the right. And it'll be important in a minute, you'll understand. So there's one done, okay? And I'll smooth this down. Same thing with this one, putting our tape out, putting it to the top, and rolling it to the right. All right? So here we go. So we're going to take our first color, and you start twisting to the right. So it seems a little daunting, I'm sure, but... A lot of people use reversible drills. Um, I actually have a cording maker, which I do not like because it. I will use one just to twirl it sometimes if my hands were exhausted when I used to do this, you know, like <laughs> way too many cords in a day. And you keep twisting it. Now keep it really taut and every once in a while kind of pull back on it. I'm holding, holding my vice grip so that I can, because Plenty of times I've had it pop out of there even when I thought it was really tight. Okay, so it's twist, twist, twist. Keep it really taut. Do not let it fold over on itself. Right here, it is trying, see it, that little bulging? If I was to relax this back and not hold it really taut, that would fold over and it's it just doesn't do good things. I try not to do that. So when it starts to do that little, like it wants to roll over, do it a few more times, keeping it really tight. Don't let it go. Oh. And I pin it. Okay. I pin it on the side of my board when I do this because the top is very 
compressed, whereas the side you've ever seen plywood, it almost looks like little layers and it's easier to push in there. Okay, so now we're going to do our second color. I'm sorry I chose such dark colors. I just ran over and grabbed them, not thinking about how much of this would end up over the void of the edge of my table. Now, you know about how far you have to go because either these are the exact same length, they're the exact same strands. You can tell when you're getting close because here's the end of your red or your other one. Now this one might yield a few more turns out of it. Pull, 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 pull. Keep going. So the blue is going to be a little bit longer than the red. Push them both hard against the wood so that they don't let go. Let's hope I don't muck this up and have it let go. Okay, so here's the two. Keep them really taut. Don't let them go back on themselves. Now this time when you put the tape on, you're going to put it on the bottom of the piece of tape, okay? Because what you're going to do is now very slowly keeping this all taunt, you're going to roll this to the left and it's going to roll back on this tape. And that's important because as we do this, if it was rolled to the opposite way, you'll find that your tape starts to unroll as you're doing this. So we're rolling it back to the left. Okay. All right. Now you think, oh, yeah, I'm done. You know, it's, no. Keep rolling. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling to the left. And here's why. I'm sorry this, I can't zoom in closer without an extra cameraman but also because I want you to see the whole thing for this reason. I pull it taunt again, okay? And then I kind of massage it a little, make sure everybody's kind of even, and then I let it turn backwards in my hand. It's gonna go, oh, I gotta turn back. This is about if you look back on the video, it's about twice as tight now as it used to be. Okay, when when I just let it, you know, naturally stop. It's just much more even. And the thing that you're going to notice when you're putting this on as you are onto your ornament or eyeglass case or whatever, as you're putting it at least I find when I'm say putting it around the edge, I like to give it a little twist as I go to make sure that they all look uniformly tight. As I'm sewing, I twist it and twist it a little more and twist it as I go around so that they all kind of look the same tight, you know, same size. Because otherwise, sometimes as you're going and you're just sewing around, these get kind of loose looking over here as you're just bringing it around. I don't know why. You can, If you choose, if you're more comfortable with doing your initial turns twisting to the left, go ahead. But just remember, when you do the other one, you got to go left. And then when you're trying to go to get them combined like this, you're just going to be twisting to the right. But always keep control of them or else they'll just, trust me, I've, I've had them spring back up on me like, you know, the peanut brittle jar, just boing. So you definitely want to just be careful with that. Okay, and good luck. Um, there's more kind of things that I can tell you about um, intertwining metallics and how to do that, but that's going to have to be for another day. Happy courting. <laughs> Happy finishing. <laughs>